All right, y'all, let's keep it moving. Um, I want to introduce two, 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 two very powerful brothers, man. How many of y'all interested in the oil and gas industry? This is Texas, so this is, who, 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 who's, from, who's from Houston? Who's from Texas in the building? All right, so y'all know that all the money is in oil and gas, right? All right, guys, listen, before we continue the show, I got to give a shout out to our sponsor and our partner, OTR Solutions, formerly OTR Capital. But listen, guys, OTR is much, much more than just a factoring company. They provide so many solutions to help the small carrier not only get into business, but to stay in business and maintain, right? So you guys have to partner with them and check them out. Don't take my advice for it. Talk to their clients, right? Talk to their clients. Find out what the people are saying. Everybody will tell you the same thing. So make sure you give OTR Solutions a call at 470-900-3338 or click the link in the bio below. Make sure you check them out and tell them Truck and Hustle sent you. All right, so I'm bringing two giants in the industry, man. Bring them to the stage. I got my brother Marcus Jones and I got my brother Raul Mendez. Please welcome to the stage. Come on up, guys. All right, all right, all right, all right. So we're going to get into it, man. First of all, I'm extremely excited. Both of these guys have been on Truck and Hustle at different times, and uh, we've had great conversations about this industry. Uh, so I just want to let you introduce yourselves real quick. Just give a, gr a brief overview of your businesses and what you guys do. So I'll start with you, Marcus. Luke, I'll see you on IG. Uh, I do fraxing, coordinating. Uh, I run vacuumatics, where I haul plastic. I'm, I run a company called 314 Logistics, where we're pretty much diversified in the last 10 to 15 years. We do flatbeds, step decks, we do the oil field, we do boxes, we do the little, little pneumatics, and we also do um, vacuum medic. We have a full service diesel shop. Me and my brother have been operating trucking for the last 10 years. God, how, how, much, how much trucks you got, man? People are there the numbers. Well, we, we, we scaled up and we scaled down. We've been um, at about 180, something like that. Well, that was, that was an oil field. He's yeah, being modest. We'll, we'll start that. We'll start that as we. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Raul, tell him what's up. How you doing, guys? My name is Raul Mendez with uh, Texas Chrome Transport. I got 42 years in transportation. My dad started the company back in the mid 70s. So 42 years, done a little bit of everything: drive van, reefer, flatbed, done it all across the country. The last 12 years, we've been in the oil and gas. Currently running 326 trucks, uh, specializing in frac sand, final mile logistics, and uh, yeah, based in San Antonio. All right, sound good. See, this is set the tone, right? This is real serious business here, guys. All right, so for, for people to really get an understanding of what this industry is about, let's talk about it, man. Oil and gas, frack sand. Let's give the basics. What 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 is fracking? What is oil and gas? Tell them about it. So basically what we're doing, we have we have a pad that we basically, well, well, let's start from the smallest. We have vegetation, trees and land and all that, right? So a, a surveyor comes in, he says, there's oil right here. So what they do, the oil companies, they buy the lease from, the, um, from, the, from a lease come from the uh, landowner and they go into extracting the oil. Where they, then they go in, they pad, they basically push the pad over, rock it, do everything they do, and then they start to drill. Once they drill the pad, they're, dr they're drilling at a depth of about 14, 15,000 lateral, which is, it's like a little hill in the ground. And then we start this stage called fracking. Each part in that ground, of, let's say it's 14,000 feet in the ground, each part of that, we have to hit a zone because there's oil sitting in those pockets. And that's what fracking is. Basically, we're sandblasting the ground and, and getting the oil to extract out with the sand. Got it, got it. And then where does the transportation component come into that, Raul? So transportation on, on the drilling side, you have drilling, you have completions, and you have production. So on the transportation side, I mean, there's a lot of avenues, a lot of different markets you can hit. You know, for example, on drilling, you know, there's there's flatbed trucks drilling or delivering the pipe. On the completion side, you have chemicals, you have frac sand, you have water, you have vacuum trucks delivering water for for, for the ponds, and then you have uh, you know completions. We're really it's production side as well. You know, we're hauling crude oil. So um, for us, it's it's like the last speaker said. You know, once you find your niche, for us, it's frac sand. You know, we we actually pump frac sand down hole to extract the oil and natural gas off the ground. Got it. And so, Marcus, you getting in the industry, what made you decide to get into that niche? You guys are in the same niche as all in a frack sand. What made you choose that? As Raul said, there's different opportunities, right, in the, in, in the business. What made you choose that one? Well, I got in it around 09, right after the 08 crash um, from, from the housing market. 
the market kind of basically reset it. I was like 20 at that age, at that time. Um, I didn't want to do like over the road trucking. And I ran into one of my, my good friends and he was doing an oil field. He was a frac sand manager. Um, you needed a CDL at the time. I got a CDL, got out there and I seen a whole nother world. And this is like, I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. So it's like 30, 30 three hours apart. It's a whole nother world in, in the middle of Odessa. So as when I seen that, uh, I ran into a supervisor that day. He told me, Hey, stay in this and you'll go places. And so I took that and I kept that. I was like, stay in and you'll go places. So I learned the frack side game. I would, I was, I started as a fueler where I would just go around putting gas in the frack pumps. Then I ended up becoming a supervisor and I started learning. It. And then once I started seeing, um, I start seeing these sand trucks just come in and they would blow sand off into these hoppers with these big old lids we had, right? And so once you're a supervisor, you kind of get exposed to more. And so I start seeing their load tickets all the time. And then I start seeing, we had a bad frat crew. And I start seeing a lot of them just sitting on the side of the road as we leave every day, barbecuing. And I was like, barbecuing, chilling. There's <laughs> gotta be some money in this, right? There's right, right. gotta be some money in it. So I go into the, um, to, into the HR and I pull the numbers. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, this is what we doing? Like, I'm on the back, I'm on the worker side of this. And he's sitting in a truck, just sitting there smiling. I'm talking about, they're getting like 150 an hour this time. <laughs> Right. And we, we, they've been sitting there three days and it's continuous. It's not stopping at this point. So I said, I know what I'm going to be doing in truck. That's exactly what I said. So I bought me a blower, bought me a truck. I said it and I waited on my time. And then like we had a little dip in the market and I went, I just jumped out there, jumped on faith. Got it. Um, at that time, I used to see his trucks all the time. He got the baddest trucks in Texas. So I used to see his trucks all the time. I was like, man, they ain't playing. Like I'm talking about these. Beautiful two hundred thousand dollar rigs just running up and down the road. Um, never thought I was going to meet him or nothing like that. Um, fast forward to um, twenty eighteen, where I was able to get a, um, a good well in his backyard. He would call it um, <laughs> South Texas uh, with Calfrec uh, Well Services, where I needed like a hundred something trucks. So uh, one day I was driving home from my well, and my brother said, "Hey, uh, you know Raul with TCT?" I said, "Yeah." Of course, we're not going, bro. And he said, uh, well, he just called me. I'm going to give me a number. So y'all can talk. And so he called me. And I was like, wow. It was like a surreal moment because I've been watching this dude actually dominate for years. And he called me. So that means he's seen me make some noise. Like, <laughs> so, that's right. so that's, so that, and that was, um, it was so, um, like, I would say, um, like, it was, it's like a little flower he didn't know he gave me for me working hard and, and um, um, trusting myself. You know, and I think that's important that people, we, we pay attention to those little things like that. But we were around around 110 and then he was just trying to see what we were doing. And I got to meet him and, and we've just been talking and developing a relationship ever since. Got it. Ra Raul, so you, you, and you have a family business. You have many different verticals in the business. You have the chrome shop, uh, the diesel mechanic shop, just the same as you. You have a diesel mechanic shop as well. How, how did you kind of talk about how you kind of got into the industry? Because you started before Marcus. To talk talk about your your journey a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So of course, so for us, you know, we've been doing transportation for a long time. We're actually hauling auto parts for GM and Chrysler. So my dad started the company in the mid seventies, and we would do auto parts and travel to Michigan, Ohio, Toledo, and come back with loaded racks back to the assembly plants in Mexico. And then um, fast forward, you know, Marcus mentioned the dip in, in the market back in 08. So in 09, I was telling these people the story. You know, there was uh, Mark Bernard duffel bag. Okay. Yeah, so there was a guy yeah. buying trucks. We used to own a, a dealership. We still do. We were selling trucks there, and there's a guy who would come in once a week, every week, with a duffel bag and just hard cash, just buying a truck every week, every week. So by the third week, I had to ask this guy, like, man, what the hell are you doing? Like, what are, what are, you, what are you transporting? He's like, we're doing frac sand, you know, for the oil sites. And at the time, in 09, you know, 2010, I had no idea what oil and gas, pneumatic tanker, what that was, frac sand, what it was used for. And I'm like, man, shoot, you, know, you got to give me an opportunity, man. Give me, give me a chance. You know, let me help you grow the company and you, you, you help me. He's like, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, we'll start with one truck. And uh, trucks were generating about 35000 a month net after fuel, after driver, 30 to 40K per truck per week. I mean, per month. And, um, oh, gosh, it just took off from there, you know, 2010, 2011. And, of course, you guys got to look at, you know, I don't want to get too political, but, you know, when a Democrat's in the office, oil and gas does very well. You know, obviously, you see right now with Joe Biden and the situation now with, with you know, Ukraine and Russia and what's 
going on, supply and demand. But in 2010 to 2014, gosh, we, we, we did very well. So it's safe to say there's a lot of money in this industry, right? Both of you guys alluded to you had your situation where you saw the invoicing and you're like, man, there's a lot of money being made. You had duffel bag Bernard come in and talk about that. So is that still the case? What's going on in the industry currently? What's, what's the current landscape compared to when you kind of got into what's happening now and, and how is the, the global economy kind of affecting things for people who are interested in getting it now? Because this is people are starting now. Well, I do. I told you I do a little bit of both over the road and in the oil field now. Um, the oil field is nothing better than the oil field, right? When it comes to profit, you know, when it comes to me doing $10,000 a week and only doing 1,500 miles or something like that, and my driver only ran 33 miles, and he's doing three, four turns a day. Um, and, and the thing about the oil field that separates it from any of the traditional um, landscape and stuff, you know what you're going to be doing for that 30 days, for that month, for that six weeks, and based on what the well is doing. So, I mean, it's a little, it has its ups and downs and weights, but you can predict, like he just said, you can predict your 40,000 in that month. You can predict those things in the oil field. And that's, that's what separates it from anything else, I believe. Got it. Raul, what are some of the challenges that you face, uh, you know, working in the oil fields currently? Really, right now, there's some challenges. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's great. It's good. But see, I also tell people, like, it, it's a roller coaster ride, you know, when it's, when it's great, you're doing very well, you're making a lot of money. But when it's bad, it's bad. You know, 2015, when oil came down, you know, I had guys making, in, in 14, guys were buying, you know, truck after truck, trailers, uh, buying their daughters brand new vehicles, you know, everybody took you know, brand new homes. And they were doing well. And in 15, when oil came down, oh gosh, a lot of people just lost, lost their money, lost their out of business. Yeah. So it's been a challenge for us the last eight years adapting, not just to the 15 crash, but you know, of course, COVID. So it's, it's been a roller coaster up and down. Got it. And, and, and both you guys, you guys have had tons of equipment, tons of trucks. Seems like in, in this world, you guys scale up pretty fast. Why is that? Like, why is it you, you start from one truck and then so quickly you got like 50, 100? 200 trucks in a couple of years. Like, how does that happen? Because in traditional trucking, that's not normal. I mean, you got to be able to do what the customer wants you to do on, in the oil field. And that's basically take care of that well. And if they trust you, you know, they'll, they'll let you grow. And it's, so it's easy to, to go from, I think we had, um, we started in 2017 with 47 trucks. And then by the end of January, we had 70 because I had another well at the time. And he'll tell you that, that that's how it goes. Like, you, you're going to, you'll go from 100 trucks to, I need, now I need 140 because you have to, and, and then the oil field doesn't sleep. It's not like a traditional business where you, these guys go home to facilities like you, or they have two night shifts. It's basically 24 seven Christmas, you know, your mother's birthday, anything. It's going to roll. It's not going to, it doesn't depend on you. It does. It's based on energy and how the world moves. And one of our main, main problems is like we had our problem was when the pandemic crushed, when, that, when it crushed energy. That was one of our problems. I think he, it was an 08 type field where it kind of made us stall. But what it done, it, what it done for the rest of the economy, it, it basically where we're at right now, the prices are high. You know, we have a diesel shortage. Those are some of the things that when the oil field crashed, um, what was it what, like two years ago, that it created that type of problem. And so now we, we have where everyone was happy in 2020 to be get into trucking. Because if, if you know anybody that got into trucking in 2020, you can take a, a drive in and do $10,000 and be happy because fuel was at what 17, 15% at that time. So now you, you have the back end of that where all the ships were sitting at, we, see, we didn't, we didn't look at this thing in the terms of all the ships were sitting at sea at one point. Now, all, and there was oil tankers and stuff sitting at sea too. As we were moving the, the economy, we wasn't thinking about the consumption. So the back end of it's going to be high prices and they're going to be higher than I think we ever seen. Are we running out of diesel in 25 days? What's going on with that, man? We've been hearing all this news and you guys, I'm sure you study the markets and you, you, you have inside information. What is going on with, with this, this news? We hear diesel, I'm running out in 25 days. We have to have another pandemic type atmosphere to have a 25 day diesel shortage because it, it has to be an eruption, eruption somewhere. You have like four major causes that are causing diesel to actually us, us to use more. You have the um, what I call the agricultural time, where night right now we're what is it harvest season where we're planting, and then you have springtime where it's where they use farming equipment again, 
And so we buy up a lot of the steel products at that time. Also, you have um, 2.5 gallons a day. It, co- it, it causes us to like actually burn our, our, our house, keep our house warm. So that's another the steel product. You got 700,000 barrels of, um, of oil that's off the market from Russia. That's another problem. Um, two, two years ago, you had more refineries because of what the oil field, what, um, COVID did. You have some refineries closed. So that's another, so there's major factors that cause this diesel shortage. Only way we're going to have a diesel shortage is we shut the world down again. And that is a real pandemic at that time. Got it, Raul. When you hear news like that, what are you doing to prepare? Does that, does that scare you or does that mean, you know, we're going to be doing more work domestically, like to do more fracking? Like, what does that mean to you when you hear that type of stuff? GTT Commercial Tires is a tire store that's designed with the owner operator in mind. It serves as a helpful community where you are always their number one priority. Whether you're a new owner operator or you've been driving for years, their mission is the same to keep owner operators in business. That's why they go above and beyond providing superior customer service when you actually need it, educating you on proper tire care and delivering a no BS sales experience. With two conveniently located stores in Richmond and Petersburg, Virginia, and almost 2,000 five-star Google reviews, they are truly raising the bar and setting a new standard in tire care. Make sure you call 1-800-991-6251 to schedule your appointment now and tell them Truck and Hustle sent you. I think it's more of a supply and demand. If you guys look when uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, you know, back in February, well, short oil shot up. You know, we were at about $118 a barrel on, on the crude. So when things are high, when oil prices are over $100, demand demand's high. And of course, like Marcus mentioned, supply is coming down. So COVID's really affected a lot of things in every industry. But with COVID, you know, supply keeps trending downward. So demand keeps going up. It, it's just for us, you know, we're preparing on our end to hopefully, you know, rack more wells, drill and complete. And uh, hopefully these U.S. companies can, can be where, where the Saudis are, you know? next five years is where it's at yeah it's gonna be where it's at there you go there you go so so that that's a, that's a great segue so how do what what's a great first step for people to get in do you start out as a frack hand do you start out learning the industry from that end and then maybe transition and buy your first truck do you you know what is the path that you would suggest or you guys would suggest to get into this industry Auto operators for us we, we run 326 trucks i own 78 company owned uh, 248 are owner operators. And these are all owner operators across the country. You know, guys from Florida, California, New York, they come, they come to Texas. You know, like we mentioned, Texas is big. Uh, you know, the amount of oil that we produce, you got West Texas, you got East Texas, you got South Texas. Uh, ourselves, we run, currently running all South. And uh, these owner operators can generate ten, twelve thousand $12,000 net. Net, that's it, you know, not gross, we're talking net. So that's pretty high. I mean, 10, 12K. Now keep in mind, you're not going to make that every single week, but but like he mentioned, you know, it's got to just, you know, with supply and demand, it, it's good. And uh, owner operators are doing very well. You can actually scale up from one truck to a few trucks. And if you run a fleet of five to 10 trucks, just think about the, the amount of money you can make. Got it. Let me see, Marcus. So, what I did in the last two years, I've seen that the oil field was totally oblivious to my, my coach. So, I created a course to basically walk you through those steps of what Raul was saying. Like, you won't, you don't have to call Raul and be like, What's a blower? Because you already have the information. He's going to hang over your face. He's going to be, I already know you don't want to deal with it. So I created a course, and my course has really been doing well with some of the people that take it. You got to see in the whole thing, you got to have like a, you got to have a real ambition for cash. You got to really want it. I've had people go from 40, just buying the information and going and having 40 trucks out there in the permit right now with ProPetro, one of the highest paying customers. So it's all about who you are. And, and it's all about giving it to the right people. So I put together that just to, so you meet people like Raul or you call me, some of my people call me and I've known this guy screws over people. I'm not going to see you there. Right. Cause Texas is different. The oil, Texas oil field is really different. And Raul can, you can chime in on some of that too. Yeah. It's so many opportunities. And, uh, but yeah, Texas is a big, big state. You know, everything that goes, you know, of course, like they say, Texas is big and you got, yeah. That's right. That's right. So with, with the students that you train, uh, Marcus, what have been some of the challenges? Because many people may be thinking about, you know, getting into this industry. So they probably like to hear, like, what have been some of the difficulties of some of the people you've had success stories? But what have been the people that have been able to kind of get past that threshold or, you know, move forward? What have been the challenges? I think they 
patience for one, because if you're going into something, it's not it's unconventional trucking. So and then you have to understand how it moves. So I think that's been some of the challenges. But most 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 of the people that, that I've got in that got in and executed have won. Because it's so it's so many people so many ways to make money in the oil field. So many people like Rose, so many people like me. So it's it's basically getting you into a guide where you don't go out here and fail in your face. And then you learn it. You learn how to frack. Because I, I come from the, the frack side, then I went to the transportation side. So I'm giving you a, a, a overview of basically the whole game of what's going on out there. So you can talk to your driver a little bit better. So you're just not throwing darts at a, um, at a pig, square hole or something. Got it. What about equipment? What type of trucks do you guys prefer? Do you guys like used trucks, newer trucks? Like, how does that impact the business? Uh, I think I think both are good. I, I like both. I like a little bit of mixture of both. For what reasons? Uh, for driver reasons in some cases. Some attention. Yeah, some drivers like older equipment, like Peter builds, like Raul has, or I have, and some guys just want a newer unit. So, got no about you, Raul. My advice to people is just go use go pre. Pre-emission, pre-owned, and uh, don't you know? Don't have to touch a uh, you know. As far as I mean, because that's one of the risks we take. You know, for example, owner ops that work for us currently, you know, they have to invest in a blower that's going to be five to eight thousand. They got to invest in a trader. You know, whether you're hauling uh you know chassis or you're doing pneumatics. Your pneumatics currently used are about thirty to fifty k. Used are seventy k. So I tell people just go just buy used. You know, stick to that. Don't have too much debt. And, uh, you know, save your money. Keep your costs. Keep your costs low. That's right. Give yeah, it right up now. for Raul Mendez and Marcus Jones, two monsters in oil and gas. I appreciate you guys, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you.